You play high school football? Here's the perfect workout for you. Our next caller is Brian from California. Hey, what's up, Brian? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Um, I am a 40-year-old strength and conditioning coach, football coach, and a high school teacher. And instead of asking a question for myself, I figured I'd ask you guys a question uh, regarding my program. Um, currently, I, uh, I am an on-the-field coach, but I'm transitioning to the strength and conditioning program. And because of the COVID year and the community that I work in, our players don't have the best uh, weightlifting background. And so what I've tried to do is implement all the principles that you guys have uh, incorporated throughout your guys' programs and uh, implement it into our strength and conditioning program. And uh, I submitted uh, my workout plan to you guys, and I wanted to see if you guys had any tweaks or suggestions uh, on how we can actually improve or uh, things that you think might be able to be uh, added to it. Wait a second. You went you went 10-0 and 0 in the regular season? Yes, we went 10-0 in the regular season. Oh, yeah. shit. We're looking, work, at, man. We're, we're looking at your question right now. Do you mind if I read off some of the stuff that you wrote, just so the audience knows? Yeah, what you're yeah. Talking about? knock it out. Okay, so um, it says here that you're you're having the, the, the boys go to the gym, the weight room, excuse me, three days a week. They do one primary exercise per zone, so that's two, like three, that. three mm -hmm. movements, one for the upper I like that middle lot. part of the body and then the lower body. Um, then after that, the boys go to the racks. There's 12 racks, 12 platforms. It's a nice school gym, by the way. Um, there's two kids per rack and two per platform, and there's four exercises assigned. So essentially the whole workout, besides the priming, is about four exercises. And then halfway through, they switch. You go platform to rack and then vice versa. And you're taking from MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, in maps uh, aesthetic. Yeah, I is, like I like where you're going. Yeah, man. is that is that pretty? That's did I cover that pretty well? Yeah, you knocked it out pretty well. Uh, the only thing is, there's actually eight exercises. There's four in each location, so they'll go four in the rack and then half the period, and they'll switch to four on the platform. Okay, I, and now I, I'd love to hear what J Justin. This is his totally his wheelhouse, and um, his expertise is uh, yeah superior on this. So well. Okay, so I'm trying to kind of rack my brain around what what were your difficulties with your kids? Because I know for me, the biggest difficulty was establishing proper forms and, me and mechanics because they just, I just felt like they didn't have any kind of, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of education provided previous to that in terms of, you know, a backloaded squat deadlifts, you know, bench press. And so for me, I was scrambling to try and establish like proper form and, and really reduce it down to, you know, the bare minimum in terms of what I had them focus on. Uh, so it, it, with that in mind, uh, I, I've actually been doing quite a bit of this and, and thinking about how to construct a good off-season program and training. Um, and one of the things, and I love how you're bringing up the priming zones and you're addressing that before we even get into the workouts because I think that's essential. And a lot of coaches, you know, just kind of breeze over a lot of like the actual um, quality of of their movements and their their capability of of providing that kind of stability and structure with their joints. Um, and so for me, I wanted to kind of maybe address it more from a unilateral perspective in the beginning and, and, and make sure that, you know, I was addressing the imbalances, you know, going through a phase of that and then kind of picking that momentum up and then going back into bilateral type of, uh, of lifts like you're, you're describing here. So, uh, I guess my question to you is how good do you feel the, their mechanics are currently? Well, what are the eight exercises? First of all, cause maybe yes, he's, maybe he's doing a Bulgar out. Bulgarian squat in there. What are you doing? So actually, um, I attached it to you guys, but we, do, it, there's three phases into it. So like what I've done is I planned out from January all the way through in season. Okay. So what we're looking at is we're doing all the major lifts, um, but depending on the phase, we phase into some unilateral stuff and some uh, multiplanar stuff. Just because nice. one of the things that I I figured out with you guys, and when I went through performance myself, I noticed that I was really strong in one plane, but I get into another plane, yeah. and I would really struggle with that. And so yeah. that incorporating the multiplanar stuff and the uh, the priming stuff was one of the key things. Our big issue was our boys weren't very mobile and we had built a pretty mm -hmm. good strength base uh, with our head coach. But our problem was, you know, COVID and everything else has gone on in the lockdowns. Yeah. A lot of our kids that are coming in haven't played or haven't worked out in quite a while. And so that was one of the big things that we found before in, in, in this season this year. 
Yeah, no, that's good to know because I'm glad you guys were able to establish good strength. I, I felt like we did a terrible job of that, and I kind of came in mid, uh, mid go in, in terms of our off season training. And so my big focus is to eliminate a lot of the cardiovascular uh, endurance type training and just focus on the strength and, and and get as far as we can, you know, up leading into you know Hell Week in in a sense uh, because that's one of those you know conditioning is sort of that button that that coaches always want to hit uh, because it's. it's it's difficult. It's it, it provides that mental discipline, and um, this is sort of what you know. A lot of coaches tend to throttle down on when what's going to provide longevity and performance on the field is the strength that we're going to be able to apply. So, um, you know, so if you're if you don't mind, I'll kind of break down what I'm basically going to be doing with with this team and see if it applies to your guys. But we're going to be focusing primarily on unilateral training. We're going to build that into like a five by five type of uh, situation. Where we're working on you know five to seven core lifts and we're going to master those lifts we're going to kind of transition from that into more of a maps anabolic where we're just focusing on you know building up that muscle and size uh and add in a bit of hypertrophy uh and you know and i'm going to kind of drag that then into transition to more of a maps performance where we're going to get you know uh into actually uh that multiplanar type of of movement and strength uh and then you know and i'm going to string that out you know all the way up until then the very last peak is we're going to be in our conditioning phase and, and we're going to be doing uh you know more speed power and skill training uh, in conjunction with that so um one of the things that i want to make sure that i establish is is the the skill on the field uh and so less on the conditioning more on the quality of the movement so explosive movement uh you know running their passing trees you know like having like each group so whether you're linemen you have you know very specific drills that you're running on the field uh like say on our if, if MAPS Anabolic is our example, we're going to be doing that during our trigger session type days. So, you know, they're going to be on the field just working and drilling their skill uh, and then also applying the, the rubber band uh, workouts, full body workouts to, to then help to, um, you know, establish that recovery, active recovery. Uh, and then we're going to jump back into our foundational type lifts. So um, I'm sort of like pairing those together and then using our program as the baseline, uh, but then implementing. And so one other thing to, to kind of, you know, sum this up as well, uh, deadlifting for me, I find, I find valuable. Um, I find a lot of value in the trap bar deadlifts with this particular group because it's agree. it's less uh technical and it's less cues i have to make sure i establish ahead of time but also you know the kids can just pick it up and, and really like build upon that that foundational strength and it's 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 something like that risk versus reward thing i'm always playing with that to see which one has the most value and so like even power cleans is something i'm sort of subbing out for things like heavy kettlebell swings uh and and also like trap bar uh, a type of uh clean so uh, just just things to consider in terms of like what where your athletes are at uh, with their education, their background, their skill, uh, and then what you can establish in that window uh, leading back into the season. So, Justin, I want to I want to back you up to when you talked about. Uh, so, let's look at this as a like a, a at least a rough time frame. What are you talking about when you said unilateral training? Are you doing that for a couple weeks leading into maps interval? Are you doing that for three months? Like. How long are you focusing on unilateral before you move them into MAPS anabolic and then into performance? And how much of a, a time window does he need? Yeah, it's about a month, month and a half. We're, we're focusing on unilateral training and okay. then leading into the five by five, which we're going to run then for the next like, you know, two months uh, leading into the MAPS anabolic, which we're, then we're going to establish that and go through that entire uh, progression. Jeez. <laughs> which then leads into uh, maps performance. And so I might actually repeat, you know, one or two phases of say maps anabolic or maps performance, depending on, you know, the timing of that leading into the end of the off season. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of constructing and drawing up. Currently. So essentially at least a month of unilateral type, training. at least a month. Yeah. And, and, and two, this is good because after season, you know, the players are beat up uh, and, and, if we just jump right into to strength training and we're building upon 
um, you know, some of these dis dysfunctions and we're not addressing them specifically. That's a good point. Um, you know, that's something that uh, is going <laughs> to, you know, we're, we're going to lead into bad patterns uh, that we're going to deal with later on. So yeah. I want to I really like hyper focus on those. And it's not as cool and sexy to, to, to get into that because the kids really want to just build muscle yeah, right now. Yeah, and one, one thing I want to comment on, Brian, is especially when you're working with, um, you know, high school kids, form is everything. So they may want to push themselves, add more weight. You see a slight breakdown in form. No, go lighter. I want your form to be perfect because the strength that they're, that they're going to build with good technique and good firing patterns is going to translate more to the field then even more strength gains with crappy form, right? So focus on the form at all times. That's got to be the number because it's very easy for it to get away from you, especially when you're dealing with high school kids and there's a bunch of guys in the gym and they want to push and they want to lift harder and they, oh my God, I can add 10 pounds if I, if I just, you know, tweak my form a little bit. Like you got to be really, really strict with the form because that's going to give them such big, bigger dividends than just pushing the weight. I mean, I, I just want to comment that I think you're you're doing a hell of a job. I think what you built yep. uh, is a is Agreed. a pretty pretty goddamn good foundation. Uh, I think the only thing that I would contribute is uh, the two things that I heard Justin say that's that sounds different than what you're doing is probably starting the beginning of their weight training with unilateral stuff. So you know, you pick your four to eight, you know, bi biggest bang for the buck type of unilateral movements to start this with, and then incorporating some of the like on field type of movements like you know running their their routes and stuff that that explosive training in there other than that i really like uh the direction that you're going maybe just put a little bit of focus on unilateral yeah. to start it off and i th i think what you're doing is a great job yeah. brian it, is, is it okay if you let us know what high school this is because i mean 10 and 0 that's pretty phenomenal yeah i teach at baldwin park high school in uh southern california oh good deal all right shout out to those to, to you yeah. guys out there do you have so you have access to maps prime anabolic performance aesthetic are you in our forum yeah I, I have pretty much everything you guys have done i've been listening since episode 25 oh, oh shit. Crap. Awesome. Good deal. <laughs> okay hey please that's hey, why this programming looks so goddamn yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well we got a new one coming out i'm not going to completely give it away but that's something that I, be able I, to use. I do want you to use because i'm going to be using okay. it with my athletes as well uh, and uh, we'll keep you informed with that. Well, why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't we do something special for him, Brian? Why don't you email Justin personally, and maybe he can give you a peek at that before anybody else gets to see. There it, you go. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be my beta tester. How about you, that? You got to be promised not to share it with anybody. Okay. I'll, I'm all for it. I won't share it. And just so, just to touch on the uh, unilateral and the on the field stuff, I'm actually using the performance uh, mobility days. Beautiful. Uh, oh. The two days that we're not lifting to start in January, and actually since uh, the beginning of November. We've been going over technique and form with PVC pipe just because oh, I know God, yeah, any bro. breakdown in form. Uh, I knew you were a smart it, guy. Yeah, dude, you're you're on the right path, yeah, bro. Brian, that's fun. I love hearing this from yeah, yeah. a strength and conditioning coach for a high school. That's phenomenal. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys have uh, drastically improved my life as well as the people around me, and uh, now I'm hoping to impart that to my, my players and my students. Yeah, thank, yeah. thank you so much. Right on, man. Brian, send, a, send an, an email over to Jerry, who, who organizes these questions for us, and just let her know that uh, Justin was going to follow up with you uh, regarding yeah. a, the new program. And I'd love to share notes with you as well, man. You're doing great things. so For sure. I really appreciate it, guys. All right, yep. brother. Thank you. That's a, you know, that's great. That's I love, cool, huh? Yeah, Well, I don't know. I, you know, high school strength coaches or high school coaches in general, sometimes I think get a bad rap and I understand why. Um, I've seen some of the workouts and the programming. I love hearing this though. This is excellent. Well, These in, kids are getting introduced in their, de in their defense, the right way. Most, uh, all, well, not all, but most, unless you're going to some private high school, that has got the money. Are, are volunteer dads yeah, that they, are, and they fall back on what they did. That's right. Back in you know, right. the eighties, yeah. So uh, it's changed a lot. So yeah, it's rare you get a guy like this who's actually probably pretty damn qualified. Yeah, to be helping these or get a Justin who's out there on yeah. the field. You're not getting like that type of a background. It's just so it's tough for high school. And, and 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 you know what? You're you're laying the foundation for these kids. So you could argue that it's probably one of the most important time for them to get really good. 
uh, good advice from a coach or a trainer. So I think he's, I think for the most part, you know, and then after hearing what he just said right now, I mean, he's really addressing the main concern of the unilateral was, you know, you're coming off this off season. You're not doing any, you're not doing anything. You have all these bad patterns. You have bad movements, but I mean, if he's incorporating stuff from performance on mobility days, he's working with PVC pipes to get technique down. He's peering into, he's looking into yes. all the dysfunction and addressing it right away. So that, that was my biggest concern. And that's why, you know, I mentioned that it was really because it's a way to, to be able to see that, um, you know, with with a large group of kids, pretty pretty visibly. Yeah, and, and the challenge was training, especially boys in this age group. Their bodies all of a sudden have all this testosterone. They don't have years of wear and tear uh, on their bodies. They, they recover very quickly. The strength gains you make when you're 16, 17, 18 happen anyway. Like you take a, it's a 15 year old and have him do nothing. And a year later, he's way stronger. So you turbocharge that with resistance training. And, but the challenge is, is, is making sure to, to, to direct it in the right place and have, cause I know, like I said, I've trained these kids and it's really easy, even for an experienced trainer to be like, Oh cool. We can add 10 pounds. Oh cool. You can do it. Wow. You hit a new PR and let the form go off by a couple degrees. Like that's the challenge. The challenge is, I got. It's like it's like growing a plant that's growing real fast. Let's make sure it grows straight before we allow it to just go crazy. Because you're right, you're setting the foundation. This is what what sets everything up in the future. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.